Hi, I'm Laura. Thanks for stopping by my channel, Aquamarine18, today. I am here with a video for 31 Days of Witchcraft, which I've been participating in throughout the month of May 2020. I will, as always, leave a link to Heather Carter's channel below, um, who started 31 Days of Witchcraft, and she has a video there explaining the prompts for, for each day of the month. Today I'm making a video for day 18's prompt, and the prompt for that is... Do you use herbs and or crystals in your personal practice? If so, which are your favorites and why? So, do I work with herbs and or crystals? Yes and yes. Um, and now the which are your favorites? And if you watched my channel in the past, you know um, that favorites can be a, a struggle for me. You know, whenever I'm asked to pick a favorite, I'm like, here's seven things I like. Uh, but I have narrowed down to what I think will be a manageable amount of things to talk about in a video of a reasonable length. So I want to talk about herbs first um, because I don't actually have anything physical to, to show on camera to talk about um, working with herbs. Um, I will just mention before I get into talking about herbs or crystals that uh, back earlier in the month there was a prompt about environmental sustainability and environmental consciousness and I talk in there about um, both herbs and crystals and how it's important to think about the environmental and ethical um, you know, issues that can surround um, harvesting and acquiring um, some of these items. So you know, it's always important to just mention that, I think, uh, for me. So in terms of herbs that I work with, I have very few to talk about, actually. Um, this is not an area that I know very much about. I have been admiring the Herb Crafters Tarot since I saw it but I am kind of scared of it, I'm not going to lie, I find it very intimidating because I don't know a lot about herbs at all or herbalism or, or anything like this. Uh, but I do have a few um, you know, plants that I work with um, quite regularly. So one favorite is lavender and I am very lucky to live fairly close to a lavender farm. Um, it's not... Um, you know, right in the city that I live in, but it's like close enough that I'm kind of driving in the area of the lavender farm often enough. And they have a shop there so I can um, have local, um, locally grown lavender. And the reason that I like lavender so much is because I find that it is really, really soothing for anxiety. Um, I have had anxiety for a very long time. I have dealt with periods where I have had many you know panic attacks that have inhibited my ability to do kind of everyday things and lavender is something that I found that really really helps and particularly it helps to just bring me off that edge of panic um, so I will make little pouches of lavender to keep with me I always have one in my car um, driving was one of the things that was really um, causing issues with panic attacks for a while after I'd been um, in an accident and so having that lavender there feels really supportive to me. Another that I do work with is sage, which I'm sure lots of folks incorporate sage into their practice. Um, I will say um, not white sage. White sage, um, you know, there are a number of issues, um, you know, that have been discussed many places, uh, you know, around it being, you know, unsustainable or, or endangered, um, being harvested and sold in, in really problematic ways. Um, so I do have some sage, but it's just like garden sage that I grow in my own garden and dry myself and that I will sometimes use for smoke cleansing. Um, it's not something I use too, too often. If I'm completely honest, a lot of, a lot of the sage I grow ends up in my belly. <laughs> but that is, a, you know, that's, that's a personal practice too, right? Sustaining the body as, as sacred as well. Uh, but I do, yeah, have sage that I grow. And the last one is cedar, and cedar is, um, you know, abundant where I live and, and grows on my property. So I know um, that, you know, I'm, I'm working with cedar in a sustainable way or in a way that doesn't deplete um, what's there. And a cedar bath is just so incredibly um, healing, you know. I feel like a cedar bath is so good for the muscles and good for the skin, um, you know, just incredibly incredibly soothing and healing um, so those are the ones that I work with the most um, lavender sage and cedar kind of in 
their physical form, I guess. We could say that I work with maybe some more um, plants if you start to count things like um, working with essential oils um, for like aromatherapy and things like that, but just keeping, you know, keeping the question more narrowly focused, I would say lavender, sage, and cedar are my favorites for the reasons I've, I've said. Next is crystals. <laughs> so here I have some things to show, um, some of my favorite crystals. And I don't have a huge crystal collection, I wouldn't say. Um, I do have sufficient. Um, some folks will know that I'm currently not buying any crystals right now um, out of some concerns about their, um, their impacts sometimes um, on the earth and on, and on laborers as well. Um, but I have a nice collection of crystals that I um, am happy with, and I do have some favorites that are the ones that I work with the most often. I will just say, before I start to talk about this, because this is going to potentially um, sound really like idiosyncratic, um, that when I work with a crystal or ascribe particular uh, properties to that crystal, or find that that crystal is um, good for particular things for me in my practice. These are things that are based on my experience um, and not based on any kind of like book knowledge. Um, you know, I, I, have, I definitely have some books on, on crystals, but I'm not one to like think, oh, I need, a, I need a crystal for this and look in a book and see what is apparently the, the best crystal for this purpose and then go out and, and buy something. I'm very much... Um, you know, one who feels like into the crystal intuitively and, and finds its properties that way. And, and I mean, properties in the sense of like metaphysical properties, obviously if a crystal like dissolves in water, that's not a property that I intuit. That's just the way that it is. But um, in terms of kind of metaphysical or spiritual properties, this is this little table of favorites that I'm going to show you and why each one is a favorite. Maybe um, some of them will align with like meanings of crystals that people are familiar with and some of them won't and you know just don't comment and tell me that I don't know <laughs> um, because I know um, you know what works for me and that's what matters to me frankly so the first one I have to show is my amazing wearable wand and of course my wearable wand was made by Kasha at Tarot Map and it has a rutilated quartz tip it's probably not going to pick up very well. Oh, there we go. Um, but you can see all of those amazing strands of, of rutilated quartz there. And, um, you know, I had wanted one of Kasha's wearable wands for so long. And then I finally saw that she had made another batch of the wands. And by the time I had, you know, seen them and been able to get in touch to say that this was the one that, that I would like to claim, this one was actually the only one that was left. So I feel like this one was waiting for me and I liked it because it was one of the um, simpler ones in the bunch and one of the smaller ones in the bunch and I really like um, wearing this related quartz very much and that's the only one that's in jewelry that I'm going to show actually um, so other favorites um, a favorite crystal probably one of the ones that I work with the most like absolute most is selenite and this is just a selenite wand i have some different um like selenite towers and i have a, a palm stone and different um, a couple of different ones but this one sits on my table all the time and is a good um, space cleaner space clearer um, as i experience it anyway um, and i just i really like selenite um, it, it, it is one that has always felt really good to me it feels really um, clean and yeah, like it, it just takes like takes shitty energy away is what selenite does um, for me. It's also a very common um, crystal in nature, um, which is which is great, you know, um, and I really just like it aesthetically as well. I think it's really beautiful. So selenite is definitely a favorite. I have one obsidian and it's a um, very big one. And smooth and this one I got at a gem show a, a local gem show um, the first time I ever went to the gem show I believe and this one is my go-to for grounding 
and kind of grounding meditation. Um, it is one that I find is very much um, a supportive one. It is, um, it, it helps me focus if that, if that makes sense, you know, when I'm, and I'm not, I would, I'm like one of the people who would say that I'm like a bad meditator. I don't think that people are bad meditators, but I kind of think I am. <laughs> so, so like to get, you know, all, all the stuff out, um, that I want to get out of my, out of my mind so that I can just sink into, um, you know, that feeling of sinking my roots down. This one is the one, um, that does that for me. And I find I will have good, um, mental breakthroughs with, um, obsidian. And I was wondering actually if that might be because obsidian is uh, is like a volcanic a volcanic rock right so you think of like um, volcanoes and eruptions and you know breaking through um, new things that's what I think of so that's my obsidian of course I love aquamarine which is in my channel name uh, for folks who don't know aquamarine is in my channel name because it's my birthstone so this is a aquamarine um, a rough one I have a few aquamarines, but this one's my favorite. Um, and the 18 in my channel name is for the moon. So there you go, um, as in the major arcana moon. So I love my birthstone. This one, I don't know if there's a more technical term for this type of crystal. I know it as window quartz, um, but you can see this one is, it's kind of frosty on the outside. And then it has one face that's clear. Um, and so you can kind of see the inside of the crystal and the window quartz. I like the window quartz um, for holding for um, path working meditation because it's like, you know, you, you're visioning, um, you're visioning yourself like stepping into a different, a different space, right? Path working or, um, you know, projecting your, your thoughts through a, a landscape is kind of how I think of it anyway. Um, so this one, um, is the one that I like for that because you can look inside it, you know, <laughs> fairly straightforward, right? That's a favorite. One of my absolute favorite crystals just in general, like not even just this specific um, specimen of it, but in general is fluorite. And so this is a rough fluorite. And I got this one from my partner um, last year, I want to say. Um, the gem show, there's like a two day gem show in where I live and it's right around my birthday. And so we went on the last day or it's two or three days. I don't remember. Anyway, we went on the last day and I looked and I, you know, picked up a few things and it turned out that my partner had gone the day before, um, with another friend of ours and picked me with some help, uh, some crystals for my birthday. And this fluorite, uh, was one of them. So then when my partner and I went to the gem show together, partner had to pretend that that all of this was new <laughs> new and exciting um like no no I wasn't here yesterday you know kind of um kind of thing um but this fluorite was one of the ones um that I got from there and um so it's a favorite I also got actually I should have I should have gotten it uh but it wasn't where I usually keep it um I also got a kyanite pendant um the same birthday which is also a favorite, but just doesn't happen to be here. Uh, other favorite, Black Moonstone. Amazing, just, you know, things that are lunar, I am drawn to, um, you know, good for um, any kind of moon related ritual. I like to have a moonstone. And getting towards the end now, I promise. Um, this Lepidolite, is another um, go-to for anxiety and stress for me. Um, it I like this particular, like this individual piece of Lepidolite because it was the flattest one and it fits, um, I can keep it in like a pocket of my pants and without it like looking like I have a huge thing in my pocket. Um, that's nice. Um, and so I can just hold it, you know, when I have to, um, I don't know, like speak, speak up at a meeting and I'm like stressed about that or something like that. Um, I find this Lepidolite is a good, um, you know, a good comrade for support for sure. And then I'll finish um, with a favorite. I don't see this crystal very often, but this one is totally 
um, one of my favorites to hold, um, you know, so much. And this one is Septarian. And Septarian is really cool crystal. Um, you know, I've read a lot of um, different, what is the word, like associations for Septarian or, or um, meanings for Septarian, but always actually um, what I find that this specific one is good for is um, connecting to like plant life that is present or animal, or like other non-human animal life um, in kind of meditation or ritual sitting outside. Um, this one is the go-to one um, for that. Um, and I'm not sure why I find that with this particular one, but you know, why do we, do we like anything that we like? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the Septarian for, for definitely kind of um, nature connection, we'll say. Um, which is important and, and um, a big part of my practice in various kinds of ways. And so this one comes along with me often when I'm, um, like if I have to travel for work or something like that, and this isn't something that happens too, too often, but if I have to go, you know, to a bigger city and stay in a hotel or something like that for a conference or a convention, and I'm, you know, in a bigger city for a couple of days and staying in a hotel, you know, 20 floors up and feel really... Um, disconnected then this one uh, comes along for that it also comes along in this little pouch and this is the last thing I'm going to show this little pouch comes with me when I'm staying in hotels and usually I'll put some other things in here um, you know depending on where I'm going and what I think I'll want um, but I always have a small selenite just a little one um, a small um, quartz like clear quartz and then I also have a sunstone and a moonstone that I bring together. So I always have at least these four um, when I'm going somewhere and I'm going to want to set up a little spot, you know, a little spot in the corner with my cards and other goodies. Um, these four will come. And if, especially if I'm in a big city and I'm going to feel, um, you know, nature disconnected from what I usually am and how I usually feel, then definitely the septarian comes along as well. So those are some of my favorite um, herbs and crystals. Of course, I'm keen to hear other folks' favorites as well and why particular ones are their favorites. Um, and I will look forward to watching those videos later on. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you again tomorrow for yet another day of 31 Days of Witchcraft. Bye for now.